So the other day I was wondering, do all of these band eight and nine students have anything in common? So I decided to research hundreds of students and what I found was they all do these five small planning hacks. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what these five planning hacks are, how you can start using them today and how they'll help you massively improve your IELTS writing score and finish everything on time on test day. To show you what I mean, I've brought you to my local park. Yes, this is what parks look like in Ireland. Every year people come here and walk right past the map and they go walking up into these mountains up here and get completely lost. But if you follow the map and the arrows around the park, it's impossible to get lost. But only if it's a good plan. If you have a bad plan, you're gonna get even more lost and fail the test. So let's go for a walk and I'll show you what band nine students do completely differently. The first thing Band 9 students do is they start the question very, very differently from other students. They do something that most students don't even think of, but it's the most important thing of all. I want you to imagine that you're here with me on my walk in this beautiful Irish forest. Every year so many tourists come here and have to be rescued by helicopter because they come unprepared. What could we do to prevent that from happening, to make sure that we never get lost? Well, there are a few things that they all have in common. Number one, they didn't check the map. Number two, they didn't think about what clothes they might need. Here in Ireland, it can be nice and sunny one moment and chucking it down and freezing the next. And most of them didn't take time to pack the essentials like water and food and a phone to call someone in case they get lost. This is exactly the same with students who get lost during the IELTS writing test. They don't take the time to fully understand the question. And if you don't understand the question, you're going to get lost. Every band nine student that I've ever worked with has spent at least one or two minutes just sitting silently and thinking deeply about the question. And they also follow a three-step system that we teach our VIP students. And I'm going to reveal this to you for free in a free essay course that I'll give to you towards the end of this video. But first, let's talk about the next thing band nine students do differently. So these band nine students have taken the time to fully understand the question, but next they need ideas to answer the question. These high level students generate ideas very, very differently from other students. So first we need to ask ourselves, what do most students do? If you look at the official statistics from IELTS, the average writing score worldwide is just band 5.5. So what most students do is obviously not working. And idea generation is a huge part of this. So what is the most popular idea generation technique? If you have a real problem, brainstorming. So helpful for writing. Brainstorming is to come up with some ideas that you want to write about. Now I want you to think about how do you feel when you are brainstorming? When we ask students this, they often say things like stressed, frustrated, it gives me a headache, under pressure, all these negative emotions. So we have a system that makes people feel terrible, but doesn't produce very good ideas. Now, if brainstorming worked, it probably would be worth feeling terrible to get good results. But the problem with brainstorming is it produces lots of irrelevant ideas and takes a lot of time. So it makes you feel bad and it produces bad results. And it's no surprise that our band eight and nine students use a completely different system. In fact, it is the opposite of brainstorming. It produces relevant, specific ideas in a fraction of the time. And that is the pathway system. These paths here are designed to help people walk around the park with the least amount of effort and make sure that they don't get lost. You can, of course, go off the paths and go into the woods, but you'll probably get lost and it's gonna take a lot of effort and you might hurt yourself and it's a very bad idea. Instead, just follow the path of least resistance and you'll be fine. So instead of brainstorming and going off the path and getting lost, just ask yourself one simple question. What is the simplest, most straightforward idea that directly answers this question? This generates relevant ideas that are easy to understand and easy to write about very, very quickly. And this will also keep your examiner very happy because it says in the marking criteria for band nine, your ideas are relevant, fully extended, and well supported. I've also included a few more idea generation techniques that I share with my VIP students. 
and I'm going to include those in the free course at the end of the video. So now you've fully understood the question and you've got high quality ideas, how do you put those into your essay? Let's go to one of the bridges here in the park to explain how band seven, eight and nine students use these ideas to write a great essay. See, many students have great ideas, but they don't know how to put those ideas into an essay that keeps the examiner happy. If we look at the marking criteria, it says in order to get a band eight or nine, we need to sequence information and ideas logically and skillfully manage paragraphing. But how do we do that? Well, to get to the other side of this river, we need a bridge. This bridge was built in 1790 by people who know way more about engineering than I ever will. I'm a complete idiot when it comes to building bridges, but I can use their knowledge from the past to walk across this bridge. And this is where structure planning comes in. Structures have been designed by people who know more about IELTS than you ever will. Their skill and knowledge allows you to take your ideas and insert them into their structure. And then you can safely make it across to the other side. But remember I mentioned before that the average score worldwide is just 5.5. And there are lots of people on the internet that tell you they have band nine structures. The problem is not structures in general. It's the people on the internet who claim they have these band nine structures. So the key really is to find structures developed by people who really know what they're doing. The good news is that on our VIP course and the structures available for free on our website, they've not only been approved by many, many, many experienced examiners, but they've produced more band seven, eight, and nine success stories than any other course in the world. So rest assured, you know they work. And if you want some of those structures included in the VIP course and me explaining step-by-step step exactly how to use them, the good news is you can get 10% off our VIP course today. I've included a 10% special discount link in the description of this video. So now we have three out of the five, but does just understanding the question, generating great ideas quickly, and then using a great structure guarantee a high score? Unfortunately not. You see, ideas and structures are only really 50% of your total score. The other 50% is for grammar, and vocabulary. You can have the best ideas and structure in the world, but if you have grammar and vocabulary problems, you're not going to get a high score. If you want a high score, everything needs to be at that score. But luckily, our five-step planning system, steps four and five, are vocabulary and grammar. So, vocabulary just means the words you'll use to express your ideas in the essay. They are just things that you use in your essay. On a walk in the forest, there are things you need to use to help you get around the park safely, like a bottle of water or a snack. Now, instead of a bottle of water, you could bring a bottle of champagne, but you'd look ridiculous. You could just jump into this waterfall and drink as much as you want, but it's probably better just to buy one from the shop. Our band nine students use their planning time to think of great vocabulary. And this works so well because of how our brains operate. You see, our brains can only really focus on one thing at a time. Try and think of two things simultaneously right now. You can't do it. But on test day, IELTS students try and think of what does the question mean, ideas, structures, vocabulary, grammar. I'm feeling very hungry. Why does the examiner hate me? I'm going to fail. How do I tell my parents? Oh my God, I'm never going to move to Canada. These are just way too many things to think of. And that's why many, many students fail. Our band eight and nine students take a few minutes to focus on the question and think about topic specific relevant words. And then when they come to write their essay, they can just focus on writing. They're not trying to think of grammar, vocabulary, writing ideas all at the same time. They do their thinking first and then their writing. And that's why they have great success. And this is really the key difference between band seven, eight and nine students and everyone else. They use planning to help them focus on one thing at a time. Students that do too many things at the same time, mess up and fall in. Students that just focus on one thing at a time, make it safely to the other side. But what about the final 25% of your writing score, grammar? The most important thing the marking criteria says about grammar is, the majority of sentences are error-free 
and makes only very occasional errors or inappropriacies. In other words, the examiner is counting the number of errors that you are making. If you make fewer errors, your score improves. Following this planning technique, you are just focusing on writing when you're writing and you make fewer errors. This planning method also saves you time because doing one thing at a time is far more efficient and allows them to get everything done within 40 minutes. In fact, most of our students, by following this system, have five or 10 minutes left at the end to just check their work. If they check their work, they're reducing and fixing the number of errors that they're making, increasing their score even more. And if you do all five of those things, you'll make it to the other side safely, even on a day like this. So I promised you a free course. If you want that, it's called IELTS Essay Builder. It's in the description, and it's gonna take you step-by-step step how to write the best essay possible. Don't forget, we also have the 10% discount for a VIP course. Or if you wanna just continue on your journey with us on YouTube, click one of these.